welcome to SMB Connect. Thank you, Radhika, for having me. Uh, so today we have Mr. Gandharv Gingra, founder of the D2C brand Roll Baby Roll, and he's also the chapter he chapter head for Chennai for National Restaurant Association of India. Thank you, Gandharv, for giving us your time. You will be featured in our Spotlight interview series. Thank you, Vansi, for having me. Over. I'll just you know start with you know how did you decide to enter the D2C market of India? Like what motivated you for making this decision? So Radhika, uh, Roll Baby Roll essentially was a uh, start into, you know, uh, into a market of Chennai, uh, which lacked a good Kathi Roll player. And uh, there was a huge gap in the QSR, the quick service restaurant market space. So I'm an ex-hotelier. I've worked for uh, more than a decade with ITC hotels. And fortunately, I was in Chennai and uh, this landscape was uh, evolving at that point of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we saw, uh, you know, there's an opportunity, you know, to target a 150, 200 rupees price point and get into the D2C space. Uh, food is a vibrant space. Everybody likes it. And if you're able to get, you know, the right product at the right price point, cater to the you know palate of, of the people. So it's surely uh, bound to work and uh, God willing, it worked for us. That's yeah. how Roll Baby Roll has been able to, you know, scale to 14 stores, uh, in Chennai, we do currently about uh, 50,000 rolls a month. Oh, that is really nice. So, I mean, rolls are basically North Indian food. And, you know, you are bringing the North Indian flavor to the... Yeah, that's really amazing. So, yeah. So, what unique value proposition did you identify that, you know, your product helps in the D2C model? Um, so, Radhika, if you look at uh, quick service restaurants, uh, you know, the understanding is... Uh, it's uh, pocket friendly, it caters to the masses, and it's something where you would like to go and eat often. Like, if, you know, if you're going for a fine dine or an experiential uh, kind of a, uh, experience to a hotel or to a restaurant, it's, it's seldom, you know, you would maybe do it once in three months or once in six months. But quick service restaurants is something which you would maybe order, you know, twice a week, visit once in 10 days or something. So the right. idea was to cater to a D2C brand, create a brand around... Uh, around a business model, uh, you know, which which caters to the masses, as I said, and uh, there was a huge opportunity in Chennai, as you said, you know, getting the food of north to south because the market was untapped, Thanks. and uh, if you are able to, you know, present yourself as as a young, uh, you know, Indian QSR, which is uh, walking around a paratha, paratha is something which is acceptable pan India. Right. You have a paratha in Kerala, a different format. You have a paratha in Delhi. You will have a paratha in Maharashtra. And to package that in a, in a grub, in a wholesome meal, you know, which can be had as a snack. So Roll Baby Roll caters to all, all those, uh, you know, this, all, all in the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a good target audience. You know, you have youngsters, you have a little elderly people right. also. Uh, so, so the idea was to have a holistic approach and a product which is, and a brand which can be a winner in the market. So essentially, that's how we have been scaling Roll Baby Roll, and that's the idea we want to move forward as well. Right. So you know, this name is very interesting. Roll Baby Roll. You know, rock and roll and things like that. So how did you came up with this unique name? Uh, so we are in a firm believer that you know, um, like Roll Baby Roll leaves that thing in your mind. You know, uh, the name excites you, and at the same time, it tells you exactly what we are talking about. Right. right, right. So, so the idea was something which is catchy, something which people will relate to. And once they understand, you know, hear the name, I really don't have to explain that what we do. So exactly. currently we have about uh, 70 odd variants of roles. So there's something for everybody. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's how uh, the name came about. Yes. Right. You know, let's just talk about the strategic approach in your business. Like, what are the key strategies that you follow blindly? And also, you know, you follow to maintain your presence in the D2C space. Uh, see, uh, in the D2C space, um, I feel there are two approaches to it. One is an online approach and one is an offline approach, right? Omnichannel uh, presence. Yeah. yeah. So that is what works in, in, uh, in a D2C model. Because um, you want to have an experience and at the same time, you want to have convenience as well, you know, sitting uh, at home to uh, right. being able to experience a brand. So in terms of uh, Roll Baby Roll, we, we have, you know, good vantage points in the city. We work in four different formats. 
one is a high street retail where we you know uh, look at pockets with high footfalls where a lot of people you know have a lot of movement on a daily basis businesses right. are located offices are located right so people come and uh, you know you have a product be it, be it a snack uh, time they're looking at or be it a you know meal they're looking at so that is uh, one uh, you know, you know uh, a business spectrum we work at the other model we work are uh, malls now malls food, mall food courts have great footfalls right that's right yes so we want to tap into that market as well which uh, by you know being present in most of the malls in chennai we are doing that uh the third business uh, model we work um uh, in and around our business parks mm-hmm. now corporates have uh, you know a lot of offices people coming in and uh, obviously they are also looking at options interacting networking during lunch hours break hour you know birthday right. celebration yeah. promotions and all that so we cater to that market we are present in dlf uh, in chennai we cater to that mm-hmm. and uh, a big uh, channel is uh, online ordering so mm-hmm. we do have our own cloud kitchens as well which uh, cater to this aspects of uh, online ordering you know there are a lot of aggregators in, in this space which have a uh, prominence and uh, and a large consumer base so uh, omni channel presence uh, is uh, is i is what we have felt is the best way to move forward a d2c brand because right. customers should be able to reach out to you from their preferred platform understood so like how do you think you know there is so much competition in the market so number one you have already mentioned that you know in southern india there were no good places to have good kathi rolls so but again i think after your business so many more brands will would have you know opened their branches of their own kathi rolls and things like that so how do you try to differentiate and stand out from the competition uh to so radhika i still feel the market is very nascent if you mm-hmm. look at numbers uh, which which i was going to uh if if you compare the indian market uh, i'm uh, talking specifically for qsrs the qsr penetration in india is only about 4% where in uh, united states and china it's 39% okay. so you can understand the gap in the market right mm-hmm. currently uh, you know uh, the market the in, it's time for india india is going right discretionary spends are increasing ordering in is increasing people dining out is increasing right Yeah. from what it was yeah. and uh, and though there are many brands which have come up it's it's correct and it's it's always good to be in healthy competition but the overall canvas is also become much larger mm-hmm. so it's space for everybody there you know look at look at uh, you know the 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 uh, role models of qsrs in india like uh, dominos and wow momo they have 1800 stores in in the mm-hmm. country and they're expanding rapidly because there is a lot of uh, demand which is there right. and supply is catching up yeah so do you think like food and beverage like i'm specifically talking about food and beverage industry in india so do you think uh, food and fnb industry should maintain that de- uh, that they should directly be uh, working towards you know i mean targeting the market that is d2c driven or it can also you know flourish in the de- retail chains so yeah i didn't get your question sorry so uh, so my uh, question here was that fnb fnb industry specifically mm-hmm. they flourish in the d2c market specifically or they can flourish in the retail market as well i think uh, any business uh, i'll talk from my perspective of uh, mm-hmm. usr i feel a uh, it's a mix and match mm-hmm. right as i said that you have to reach the consumer how you reach is is something which the consumer will decide not you what is the channel they prefer that is up to the demand which is there so you have to create supply which caters to that demand and right. in my opinion being in retail being in a uh, you know delivery segment a mix of both works better in terms mm-hmm. of profit profitability of the business as well and mm-hmm. the outreach of the business as well right because these are right. different challenges which which you want to cater to and mm-hmm. uh, food is such a product that you know as they say jo dikhta hai wo dikhta hai exactly so, there's a lot of brand recall also which you know pushes the other channel uh, like 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 an ordering in channel as well mm-hmm. so that's that's my perspective on it right so like how do you think that your brand has leveraged technology and innovation uh, innovation in enhancing the customer experience um so radhika qsr quick service restaurants when it comes to chain brand you know 
the customer is very uh, keen to make sure that you know if they are going going to one store of mine of Roll Baby Roll, mm-hmm. uh, they want consistency. Right. right? I, and if you go to another store, the taste should be exactly the same. There should be you know the similar kind of time taken to you know for you to get your order. So speed and consistency are are important factors in our business, right? Now we have used a lot of uh, technology to make sure that we standardize our backend so that you know if we are at 14 stores to, today, tomorrow we are at 50 stores, and God willing, we reach 150 stores. Mm-hmm. So the, the experience remains the same, right? So we uh, leverage on uh, you know uh, SaaS based softwares for uh, for our point of sales, for our inventory, right. for mm-hmm. our backend models, right? That is very important uh, to ensure you know your unit economics are maintained, your your point of sales, you are getting holistic feedbacks, right? In terms yeah. of uh, you know what are the channels of uh, your sale which is happening. Secondly, uh, we heavily uh, have worked on backend technology in terms of strengthening our supply chains. So uh, we we work on a lot of cold uh, cold supply chain. Uh, we do a lot of work on retort technology, mm-hmm. which which makes our uh, food shelf stable. So and uh, we are now leveraging technology in terms of how we can use uh, you know the new uh, CRM tools available in the market to right. enhance yeah. customer experience. And uh, in one of your uh, events. events, you had yes, you had held. So uh, Raji from OpenAI, he was talking yeah. about n is equal to one. Exactly. So how do I get that n is equal to one for my customers? So there are a lot of CRM mm-hmm. platforms which are coming in, which we have started working with. Because we also want to give that unique experience to say Radhika, if Radhika has ordered uh, uh, chicken roll daily style from me last time. So yeah. Radhika, this is what you can have today and this is what goes well with it. So those kind of models we, we are working on, we are actively engaging and getting on board to leverage technology to uh, you know, further enhance our business and the customer experience. No, okay. Uh, I think that's a really nice answer to that question. Uh, so my next, like, uh, how do you keep up to date with the new technologies, you know, coming on a daily basis, we can see a new technology is coming, a new trend is coming. So how do you keep up to date to that? And to, you know, because people tend to follow these trends more, uh, rigorously than the, you know, the older trends. So how do you keep up with that? Um, uh, I feel a very important, uh, part of knowing what's happening in the market is, mm-hmm. uh, is the key to it. Now, as, as you mentioned, I also head the National Restaurant Association of India's Chennai chapter. So, uh, so the role of NRI is to garner networking, garner knowledge sharing, mm-hmm. and you know, create a holistic environment in which all, all members, you know, we have a category of members called associate members, right. who are basically our uh, channel partners who work on backend technologies, you know, supply chains, who aid mm-hmm. all the restaurants. So we, we keep on doing holistic events where we connect with each other. They come and tell us, you know, what is new, what is happening, mm-hmm. you know, uh, what all uh, is uh, is new in the market and what kind of technology we can use and leverage. Uh, you know, events like Ahar and other things also kind of help us to understand, okay, this is something which has come new and we should maybe look at, you know, how we can leverage these things to make our backend stronger, make our front front end process stronger, something we can do to, you know, uh, give our customers a better experience, maybe reduce okay. our turnaround time. For example, now you look at uh, self-ordering kiosks, mm-hmm. right? I feel uh, self-ordering kiosks will be an amazing big thing very soon. Now, no, everybody is working on QR-based menus and, you know, uh, nobody wants uh, in-person interaction, right. right? People are more happy interacting with the bot and placing their order. Same mm-hmm. is going to happen with retail front as well. Now, a uh, lot of uh, self ordering kiosks have already come in and they're going to enhance the customer experience, giving more recommendations, specific uh, things that you will mm-hmm. have the customer looking at. So that's one aspect of technology we are looking at. And yes, it's very important to stay up to date because, you know, technology changes uh, very, very fast. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, like, what role does e-commerce platforms uh, play in the betterment of you know in the enhancement of your business? Uh, so, uh, uh, a lot of thanks to the you know, e-commerce revolution which happened in the last decade that uh, you know business has expanded a lot. We are able to reach a lot of customers through this channel. Now, uh, e-commerce primarily in food and beverage uh, is uh, 
uh, Swiggy, Zomato, and a lot of uh, you know uh, movement is coming on ONDC, Open Network for Digital Commerce. Yeah. So uh, these are good channels where uh, we we play, we get a, a huge volume of business, and uh, a lot of customers do order. And at the same time, if you look at it, it's convenience, right? Sitting at your home, mm-hmm. you want a hot piping party hole in twenty five minutes. So you know you which platform yeah. you have to go. Any platform. Exactly. You go, Order through all baby rules, you'll have it. So yeah. at the comfort of your home, you know, it's it's pure convenience and uh, the way quick commerce has changed the scenario in the last a mm-hmm. couple of years, it's amazing. I, I wish, you know, uh, I mean, like products like mine, a Kati roll, someday you will see these things also on quick commerce. Yeah, so, definitely. I'm looking forward to it. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's a product which can be done like uh, four to five minutes. And if, if speed of delivery is like that, I'm sure we'll have it soon with commerce as well. Exactly. Exactly. So like how do you, does your brand, you know, how uh, prioritize and enhance customer engagement? Like what uh, specific strategies you are uh, uh, taking care of to retain uh, for customer retention? Um, I'm a firm believer in customer loyalty, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, if, if you are able to retain a customer, it's as good as having three new customers because that customer is your customer for life. Right. Right. So uh, a very important strategy we, we employ at uh, Roll Baby Roll is we run a very uh, holistic uh, CRM, a customer relationship management and a loyalty program. Mm-hmm. In which uh, you know we send uh, you know targeted uh, marketing uh, uh, promotions to to our clientele to the customers who are in, informing about you know new product launches the offers we are doing or you know share asking them to share their experience so so we are connected with them you know if they have a brand recall if they understand that okay they have visited us and we would like them to you know come and try and maybe we have started a, a check in our door uh-huh. you know. Uh, we, we are trying to cater to the micro markets, right? So it's important uh, to understand the customer psyche and at the same time understand the customer palette in India. So you relate to that customer and make sure that customer comes back. Now we are in Chennai. So roles are a more of a North India based kind of a product mm-hmm. category. Mm-hmm. But how did we uh, you know, evolve uh, that category for South? So we have a Suka role, a Chekinard role, a right. Pepper role. We have, we have done adaptations to make sure that our customer, our local clientele is also satisfied with, with, with the palette. And for, a, for an Indian QSR, that's very, very important. Right. I completely understand your point. So just uh, one last question regarding the D2C spectrum that, you know, what's your brand's vision and strategy for the future growth in the D2C landscape? Uh, so we envision a uh, uh, party role market to be immense in the country and my vision one day is that World Baby Road should have 1000 stores across all corners of India. Uh, in, that's that's the long term vision I have and uh, in, in the short term we are looking to you know uh, uh, expand our brand in, in uh, the South Indian landscape where we have a lot of potential in key metro cities in South India, uh, where we plan to, you know, increase our footprint, uh, you know, enter uh, different uh, micro markets, evolve right. our product in those micro markets. And uh, the Paratha will always be a hero in, in, in the Indian subcontinent. And uh, how we, you know, champion that hero is, uh, is what we want to do at Full Baby Roll in, in the coming future. Right. I wish just I wish all the best to roll baby roll. I mean, you should guys should expand. I mean, you uh, you should you guys should expand pan India and also outside India. I hope that. And, no, definitely. Uh, so now I'll just you know shoot some questions regarding the uh, F and B industry. So mm-hmm. like uh, like what are the most effective marketing strategies for D two C food and beverage uh, food and beverage brands? Uh, the most effective marketing strategies, in my opinion, would be uh, content marketing, firstly. Mm-hmm. It's important to reach out to your clientele, uh, emailers, SMS, you know, and mm-hmm. have a channel of communication about the content you are uh, generating. Secondly, I feel uh, social media marketing is right. very, very important in today's uh-huh. Asian uh, day. I'll tell you statistics which I was reading. I was I was shocked that an average person checks their phone fifty eight times a day. 
um, I think it's like uh, it's it will be more than that. It should be more, no? Yeah, yeah. exactly. It will be more than that. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure. They must have taken some average, and yeah. uh, there are six hundred million internet users in the country today. Mm-hmm. So you can you can imagine the reach of uh, social media, and right. uh, it gives you a tool to influence the marketing to to you know uh, various channels to target mm-hmm. the consumers actually looking for something what what you're doing. So that is another very important uh, aspect of marketing which we do, and I'm sure all businesses are doing today. Right. And right. another form of uh, marketing is definitely a uh, customer relationship management or, or or a loyalty based marketing, which I was talking to you about earlier. That it's very important to you know identify the specific needs of each consumer, each customer who's coming. Right. So, uh, do you think like uh, in uh, in uh, like in uh, in association with, I'll say association, in association with social media marketing, influencer marketing is also playing a keen role? In- yes, of, yes, of course it is. Of course it is. As I said, influencer marketing is the, see, people are following uh, different people because of the content they are creating, right? Right, yeah. Because, because we, we relate to that content. We want to right. watch, we want uh-huh. to that content, right? If I'm watching some uh, reel related to a Gartley hole being made, then mm-hmm. it, it gives me, uh, you know, something I really want to look forward to in my next meals. Right. So these influencers, uh, yes, definitely, I would say have played a huge role in the way, uh, you know, things have been marketed in, in over the last couple of years. And uh, definitely has, uh, is an important channel of marketing in my opinion. Right. So, um, like, for example, you know, doing social media marketing, doing influencer marketing. So, you know, what are the pricing strategies a business can adapt to, you know, to in- sustain its business, to uh, to gain profit and also to invest money in social media marketing and influencer marketing? The business is all about numbers. And right. what is a number? So you have to understand uh, what spectrum of business you are in, right? What is your target audience? Mm-hmm. What are your uh, average order value buckets? What is your mm-hmm. agency, right? So you should have your p l in mind to understand, okay, this is what I am looking at and this is the kind of marketing spend I want to do. Right. This is that percentage, what, what you have as a levy or what you have decided to go on. You need to experiment waters, test, you know, work, work on those numbers, see what works, what doesn't work for you, mm-hmm. what channel what channel gets you more customers, which channel leads to more, uh, you know, higher retention rates. So understanding the mathematics behind uh, that is very important. So you yeah. you should be very, very, uh, you know, the numbers should be on your tips, your your, co- your cost factors to understand what is my allocation towards the marketing. And uh, not for the short term view. It always should be done with a little long term view. Right. So, so I I think that is that is the right approach. Right. So um, like we recently celebrated World Environment Day, right? So like what sustainability goals should brands look towards? You know, for the growth of the market and also by working towards saving the environment. I this is a very very important topic in today's day and age when we're seeing global uh, warming. You know and uh, erratic environment, uh, you know, uh, cycles, weather cycles are happening all around. Uh, So uh, sustainability for businesses like us is very, very important. So what we do at Roll Baby Roll is our packaging completely is eco-friendly. We do not use plastic anywhere, right? So eco-friendly packaging is the bare minimum what restaurants can start with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's our job also to give back to, to Mother Earth. Uh, another important factor I feel is what we can look at is uh, segregation or waste at source. Right. Which which will, you know, lead to greater recycling. So a lot of our stores, uh, especially which are there in malls, you know, they have a very good uh, segregation process. And mm-hmm. that's, that's something we should, you know, continuously evolve and get better. And these practices eventually, you know, once, once we understand... Uh, the importance for these things, it will definitely, uh, you know, help the future generations to come. Uh, sustainability is the key for the betterment of the society as well as that. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So just my, my last question today that what suggestions would you like to give future D2C brands in the food and beverage industry um, that uh, 
what suggestions you would like to give them the to you know to enhance their business to grow their business um the suggestions i would like to give for uh, fnb brands in the d2 d2 c space is uh, right uh, never forget the basics mm -hmm. that's that's the first thing i would say see a customer is coming back to you for an experience right for the food you're serving right those two have to be right right there are other right. obviously other other uh, elements to it which are equally important they have to be clear, taken care of but these two elements the basics have to be you know taken care of firstly so you, you make sure that the customer has a good experience a hygienic experience uh, a tasty experience at the same time mm -hmm. so he will definitely come back that is very important uh, number two i feel if you are in the retail space uh, in the b2c space uh, selecting the right location is very important even in today's day and age that mm -hmm. is uh, something i go by uh, third is always look at a uh, omni channel presence right? right you cannot discount any channel of business until you have not gone in that channel and see mm -hmm. how things go but obviously it should be something which your product can cater to right right and the last and the most important thing in a uh, in a entrepreneur to be that never give up there are challenges exactly it can be a tough business to be in but uh, the never give up spirit is always a huge work. So understand what went wrong, what can be done right. Uh, be on top of your numbers and uh, things uh, definitely pan out in the right way if you do that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gandhav. I mean, I am pretty sure people will be happy to, you know, see this interview and they will get a very good insight inside, inside the food and beverage industry and they will be, you know, learn a lot from this interview. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Radha. Have a good evening. Okay, bye.